Hey everybody, I'm back at the store. It's Thursday, Thursday Haggle. Uh, I haven't done any recording in the last couple days because honestly, you didn't want to see what I was what was happening with me. I'll tell you about it in a sec. It's Thursday Haggle. Come down here and buy some whole wheat bread from me. Cover herself up with the Islamic dressing code with the standards of the Iranian authorities. That would have been a problem. Is this unprecedented? Have other women that you mentioned competed in other sports, other Iranian women? Have they... I got one loaf of whole wheat bread to sell today to meet my capitalist goal, and that's not a lot. So I'm going to spend a big chunk of the day. I'm, I haven't forgotten about the Raptors coverage I'm going to do. And because I wasn't here for a good chunk of time, I'm going to break through exactly what happened with me since Saturday night, uh, right up until the win the other night, um, because it, it, it's, it really is, signifies the life of a Toronto Raptors fan, the roller coaster of that. It's gonna be it's a real talk. Last Saturday when I was doing the preview for the series, I was pretty confident the Raptors would win the game. And we saw what happened. I think everybody was a little too overconfident, including the team, the fans. You know, the fans honestly weren't that good at that first game. They didn't cheer the whole game. They didn't do the defense enough. They didn't pick the energy up to help the team match Orlando's energy and Orlando played exactly as best as they could and that's how they won they, they've got to play like that every time to be able to beat us and we have to play bad for them to beat us so I'm still really confident we're gonna win um, but Saturday sucked and it was like all those old feelings from years before all the crap that the media says about the team and you know, I feel like it's gaslighting sometimes. Like, I feel like they're, the media gaslights the Raptors. They don't pay any attention to them when they're doing well, and then when they do screw up, they're all over them. And Kyle Lowry, that was really disheartening what happened with him and the fan base. Um, I that we should treat the Raptors, if you're a true fan, like you would treat a partner that you're in a romantic relationship with, that it's unconditional whether they do well or not in their day professionally. You don't get mad at your your spouse because they had a crappy day at work, you know? You support them and you're there for them. And I feel like the fan base, I'm glad Nath Bhatia, super fan, said something about this online because I'm exactly 100% with him, that real fans stand by their team and they support people like Kyle Lowry who have a tough shooting game, first game. He had a good game. He just didn't score any points. But uh, yeah, I'll talk some more about what happened to me after the game. I really thought the Raptors would beat their first game opener curse this year because the team's different. We had a new coach. I was really worried Nick Nurse was going to be like Dwayne Casey after the first game in the playoffs. But uh, after the second game, I'm not worried anymore. But I think he needed to have a first game where he kind of got out of the way what to expect and what really takes to fire up the team for a playoff game is different. But I was right. Kawhi Leonard came out and he was right into playoff mode, looked fantastic. Marc Gasol, all the intangibles on display, and he's hitting open threes and stuff. So things are looking good. And in that second game, the way they won, they won the largest margin ever in the history of the Raptors in a playoff game. And that's a big deal. And I think that's just a sign of what's to come. Friday night's going to be a big game. But getting back to what happened after the game on Saturday, I fell into a depression. It's, it, I knew it would happen if we lost. I didn't think we'd lose, so it was kind of not, not what I thought would happen. But, yeah, I felt it pretty hard. I, I kind of isolated. I didn't shower for a couple days. had a hard time eating because I'm basically like, you know, E.T. is with the geranium flower. That's me with the Raptors. So when the Raptors are doing good, I'm doing good. But when uh, the Raptors are doing bad, I'm like E.T. and Elliot in the hospital beds at the end. Like, Ugh. And that's how I was from Saturday till Tuesday. I was miserable. And I didn't want to share that pain with y'all. I wanted the jubilation. I don't want to share the lows of the roller coaster life of the Raptors playoff fan. I want to show you the highs. So it was kind of good that I wasn't working those days because that was a mess, honestly. Fred, it's spring! It's spring! 
That's right, and it's the playoffs too, so we're all Gagnon. All Gagnon. Yeah, I was depressed from Saturday night till Tuesday. Tuesday, you know, I got up in the morning and I felt pretty good about them bouncing back. Because, you know, the fallout after a, an embarrassing first game loss like that is pretty, pretty profound. The players feel the shame of it. You know, the fan base freaks out and says a bunch of dumb stuff. And, uh, you know, Coach, Coach Nurse makes some adjustments. And they did a good job. On, on Tuesday night, they came out prepared and on fire and uh, really showed that they're a different caliber team than Orlando, talent-wise. And th th that's the way the game should be going down, is uh, the way Tuesday went. And it was really fun to watch how unselfish they were playing and how the ball was moving around and to see Kyle come back and have a scoring game Kawhi just unstoppable. And Marcus all really playing well. Uh, you know, Pascal Siakam. These, all these guys are really contributing uh, in, in hidden ways and in, like, very apparent ways. But the game on Friday is going to be really important because they have home court because they beat us here in Toronto. So we got to get it back. And we get it back on Friday in a hostile crowd. The Raptors play really well on the road, and they play well in Orlando. So I'm, you know, I'm confident, but I don't want to be too overconfident like we were going into game one. So we got to take them very seriously and continue to hold down Vucevic with Gasol and get to those three-point shooters. Bobby's here. Bobby, you know, when the Raptors lose in the playoffs, I yeah. get super depressed. Yeah. Like, I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to shower. I didn't do nothing. That's horrible, eh? Yeah. So, uh, you heard, you, yeah, you heard about, yeah, heard about yeah. it. What's your opinion about the Raptors so far? I mean, you know, I always feel like in, like, these season, they usually go the hardest for some reason. You know, mid-season as well. That's when they actually play good. But I feel like right when they hit the playoffs, that's when they just start yeah. Fall down. Uh, you know, I have a theory. Yeah. That the NBA, like all sports, kind of have an invisible hand that's kind of guiding things. Yeah. Like there's teams. We're, we're kidding ourselves. We don't think that there's teams that have privilege yeah. and don't have privilege. Yeah. Like a team like the New York Knicks or the Boston Celtics gets privilege. Yeah. Because teams, they're old teams. People want them to win, so they get all these kind of things. I think the Raptors are a team that without privilege in some ways. Yeah. And it's because they're in Canada in some ways. Uh, and, could be. Yeah. and I feel like that's why we lose the first game all the time. Yeah. Is because there's the invisible hands working against the Raptors. Yeah. What they find it and they get them whether they schedule them at a noon game or they do all kinds of monkey wrenches to try and mess them up in their first game. And I feel like it's kind of like a Canadian tariff. It's like we're going to put you down one game cuz you're Canadian team. Well, I feel like we should call it that Lucian easily because it's Orlando Magic. Yeah. We're 10 times better than Orlando. The last game was more like the, the what's going to happen. The last game was more like what's yeah. going to happen more during this playoff game. Well, I hope you're right, man. 100%. It has to be. Kyle Lowry, this is the second That's back. Zero points. So yeah. You have to actually pick it up. Bobby, thanks for coming in. You're welcome. Rap City. Here, Anissa, uh, you're you're talking about how you're con you're con you have a conflict because the Leafs and the Raptors are playing at the same time tomorrow night. So it doesn't make sense to me as a Toronto person why they would put the Maple Leafs and the Raptors on the same day at the same time when I want to watch both and I want to cheer for both. Right. It doesn't make sense. I understand that. Some people have split screens. Yeah. And in the past, I've actually had two televisions in my room. People go out to watch games now to cheer. Yeah, so just or you sense. go to a bar, you can see them all on there. Yeah. Now, of course, we all know if I had to choose which one I'm going to watch. Yeah. But which one, when Raptors. it gets right down to it, you're going to watch the Raptors. Yeah, exactly. All right, right, right on, man. Thanks but it's for... weird because both of the series are even. Yeah. And they're both away. You want to talk about the Leafs game last night. That was crazy. That was very, crazy. Very sad game. But it's okay. You know, they, I had counted them out when they were down by three. Yeah. And I, I said to my roommate, I was like, we should just turn it off. And then he, like, he's like, no, no, we can't do that. And then they came back and it was like, they're only down by one. Yeah. But you know what? It's growing pains with them, too. They're a young team, and they got to have those kind of games, right? They'll do it. 
Both yeah. teams are great. I'm just so happy yeah. they're both in the playoffs. As yeah. everyone should be, they're just both in the playoffs. Yeah. They'll do great. They'll We're do great lucky. Things. We could be we could be other cities that don't get any kind exactly. of that stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. They just have to deal with shit teams. Yeah. All right, Anis. All the best. It's been quite busy today. Um, it's a nice spring day. And the rains never really actually came, which is cool. I totally forgot about that loaf of bread. I'm not gonna sell this. I'm gonna fail today. Martin didn't come in, so he he would have been my best option to try and sell it, and he never came in, so I forgot about it. So I'm a complete capitalist failure. I'm okay with that. I don't have to win at capitalism to be a winner. That's the fallacy in the world today. So you have to win at capitalism to be a winner. That's not true. You gotta win at the soul, the spirit. In the mind, when at that stuff, not at money. We've been watching Kids in Variety VIP Club. Sorry, the show was kind of just me talk, doing a recap. Uh, tomorrow we'll do Free Can Friday, and I'm gonna have a new game. It's gonna be Good Friday, uh, but it'll have to do with basketball. Thanks for watching. I love y'all. Thank you.